All right, so let's continue and let's consider the Lewis structure of the carbonate um, anion. Now notice we're going to have carbon, which is the different one, also the most electronegative, so we're going to put it in the center. Oxygen's around it. We're going to count the valence electrons. Four from the carbon, six from each oxygen. It has a minus two charge here, and so we're going to add two electrons and we're going to have a total of 24 valence electrons. We're going to draw single bonds between the carbon and the oxygen, so we're going to put carbon with each of the single bonds onto um, the oxygens. Now, we're going to look at these and we're going to put the remaining electrons onto the outside atom. So if we do this, we're going to take and put in the remaining electrons. When we do this, this is our total of 24. Our urge is to put a couple more here on the carbon, but that would expand the octet which tells us now that we have to have an octet going to carbon. So we're going to take and we're going to remove a pair here and we're going to put in a double bond right there. And when we do this, we are done. We have a nice Lewis structure for the carbonate ion. We put the two minus on the outside and that's it. But if we look at it, we realize we could put that double bond on a different one of the oxygen. So if we started out with the carbon with the double bond over here, we could equally have a structure where the double bond is on this oxygen or that oxygen. And if we draw them out, we have three possibilities on where we can take and put each of the um, double bonds. We could put on each one of these three oxygens. So the question is, which one of these exists? And the answer, believe it or not, is none of them. What exists is, in fact, an average. These are what are called resonance structures. Resonant structures are when we have two or more possible, and they have to be good Lewis structures for a single molecule or ion that can be drawn only by moving electrons. And by moving electrons, it would mean we would take this bond right here and put the electrons out here. And then imagine we take these electrons right here and put them in. We're not shifting any atoms, just our bonds. Each of these possible structures are called the contributing resonance structures. Now, these electrons actually do not exist on any one of these bonds. They are, in fact, delocalized. And the structure that does exist is a mathematical average between these three resonance structures. If there were two resonance structures, it would be an average between the two. So step one, draw a good Lewis structure. If we can take and shift electrons and make another good structure, we're going to have resonance structures. These resonance structures do not exist separately. What exists is, in fact, a mathematical average. So what we have on this carbonate here is, in fact, we have one and a third bond between each carbon and oxygen. Why is it one and one third? Because this double bond is shared on three different spots. And this one and one third bond with each one of these is going to be the average resonance structure for this molecule. So let's consider sulfur dioxide. We start out here with sulfur dioxide. We're going to count our electrons. We're going to get six from sulfur and six from each oxygen for a total of 18. We're going to put sulfur in the middle, and then we're going to single bond to each of the oxygens. And when we're finished single bonding, we're going to realize we're going to put the rest of the electrons in. And if we put the elect rest of the electrons in, we're going to start out as lone pairs on the central atom, and we're going to count out. And this is going to be now a total of 16 electrons, which means that we need two more. And we're going to put the two more on the sulfur. We're not going to put them on the oxygen. They already have a complete octet. And then we realize that in order to give us an octet on sulfur, we have to bring in one of the pairs of electrons. This gives us octet on each sulfur. This is, in fact, what happens. And if we draw this out, we realize that we can get a double bond on one of the oxygens, or equally, we could get a double bond on the other oxygen. And if we did that, our two resonance structures would look like this. And these are each of the individual resonance structures. And when as soon as we have two good resonance structures, and these are good because they're equivalent, we're going to have an average. And the actual structure is going to be the mathematical average between these two and we will have one and one half bonds between the sulfur and the oxygen. 
All right, a tool that we use to figure out if we have a good Lewis structure is we calculate the formal charge on each of the atoms in the Lewis structure. Formal charge, we're going to shorthand it as a FC, is going to equal the number of valence electrons that that atom brings in. So whatever group is it, it is in, that's going to be the number of valence electrons. That's what it starts with. Now, the formal charge is the comparison between the number of electrons that it brings in with the number that it has in this structure. So we're going to take the number of valence electrons, we're going to subtract the number of non-bonding or the number of electrons in lone pairs. We're going to do this for each individual atom, and then we subtract the number of bonds onto that atom. That is one methodology. Equally, formal charge is the number of valence electrons, which is our starting point, which we're going to call V, minus the number that it owns in the structure. And this is a little easier, as this tends to be what the organic chemists do. And so we're going to give this a shot. So let's go back to sulfur dioxide. We go back to sulfur dioxide, and we start here, for the sake of argument, with dots. We're going to put our dots here so we can actually cut them in half when we look at our structure. And this would be our Lewis structure for sulfur dioxide. We're going to take and draw a line straight through the electrons in the bonds because we're going to assume that the electrons in the bonds are just shared equally. It may not be a great assumption, but it's a good starting point. And then our formal charge is the valence, so we start out with the group, and each oxygen is in group six. We're going to subtract from it the number of electrons that it owns. We look at the number on its side. That is going to be um, three lone pairs, so that's six plus one of the bonds and the um, electrons in the bond, and that's going to be a total of seven, and this is going to have a minus one formal charge. Sulfur is in group six. We look at it here, it's got one lone pair and it's sharing the rest of the electrons for a total of five, and it has a plus one formal charge. And this oxygen over here has got six valence. It owns six in this structure for a zero formal charge. Note the sum of the formal charges on an atom has to equal the charge on it. So if the charge is zero, so if it's a molecule with a zero charge, our formal charges add to zero. If it's a ion, the formal charges are going to add to the total charge on our ion. So let's try these two. And let's ask, what is the best structure for CH2O? Now, if we do this, we can say, all right, we know that we're supposed to put the C in the middle. And we know that the hydrogens have to be on the outside of something. So we could put a hydrogen here. And we have two options. We can either put the hydrogen here on the carbon, or we can take and put the hydrogen on the oxygen. And if we do these, then we can finish and fill them up, and then we can ask ourselves which is the best Lewis structure as a function of the formal charges. So for neutral molecules, the best Lewis structure is one which all the formal charges are zero. If the Lewis structures have large formal charges, positive or negative, they are much more, much less likely and much more unstable than those with small formal charges. So if you've got to be stuck with a minus one or plus one, that's better than minus two or plus two. If you have to have a negative formal charge, you want it on the element that wants electrons the most, and that is going to be the most electronegative element. And with this in mind, let's try the formal charges on these two. All right, so let's do both of these. As you start these, it is easier to start them with dots than it is with lines, so I'm going to put in dots here, it's an oxygen, dotted to a hydrogen, and that's going to be my starting point. Now to figure out the formal charge, I'm going to take the bonds, and I'm just going to split them in half, because the electrons are going to be shared equally between the atoms in the bond. And our formal charge is going to be valence minus own, so formal charge is equal to valence minus own. Owns are what on, what the electrons are which electrons are on its side of the line. Hydrogen is in group one, so any hydrogen with a single bond is one minus one, and we put the formal charge right up here, it's a little zero. Carbon is four, it owns five in this structure. If it owns five in this structure, our formal charge is a minus one. Our oxygen here is in group six, it owns five in this Lewis structure, and that's gonna give us a minus one. And our hydrogen here is one minus one. 
giving us zero. Please note our formal charges sum to zero, which they better because it's a neutral molecule. So how about this guy? Well, if we take this one instead and we single bond to hydrogen, single bond to this hydrogen, and double to the oxygen, we can calculate its formal charges. Again, take the electrons in the bond and split them in half. And if you do this, we have for hydrogen one minus one. One minus one is going to be zero. For this hydrogen, it's one minus one. And again, that's going to be zero. Carbon, carbon here is in group four. It's got four dots on its side of the line. It owns four, it brings in four, and it owns four with a zero formal charge. Oxygen here is in group six, so six minus six is going to give us a zero formal charge. Please note, again, formal charges add to zero, but they did before. So which one is better? The better is where each formal charge is closer to zero. In this case, all formal charges are zero. And this is going to be the best structure. This will be the structure that exists. The other one is not a resonant structure. One, we've moved atoms. But two, it's got bad formal charges and it will not exist. So we could do another one. So let's look at acetic acid. We look at acetic acid and we take and we put all of our electrons in. Let's start out with some basic policies here. And one of the good things to realize is what gives you good formal charges. So first of all, if you have carbon, carbon is in group four. It brings in four, but it needs four more. So carbon, if it has four bonds and zero lone pairs, I'm going to put an LP for a lone pair, it's going to have a formal charge of zero. Nitrogen, if nitrogen has three bonds and one lone pair, it's going to have a formal charge of zero. Oxygen, if oxygen has two bonds and two lone pairs, it's going to have a formal charge of zero. And hydrogen or fluorine or chlorine or bromine and iodine, keep these guys, if these guys have one bond, these guys will have one bond and three lone pairs. Obviously, hydrogen doesn't have lone pairs. If these guys have one bond, they're going to have a formal charge of zero. So if we look at this, we know that what we need consistently here, four bonds to carbon, one bond to each hydrogen, and then we need two bonds to each oxygen. So if we draw this out and we keep going like this, we're going to have a carbon. We know that carbon wants four bonds. So we're going to start out here with each single bond to our uh, hydrogens, and then we're going to bond to another carbon. If we have our oxygen and our hydrogen, we know we have to have four bonds to this carbon. This one here has one. So I'm going to put a double bond here. I'm going to do that because now I have four bonds on carbon. If I put the lone pairs on the oxygen, I'm going to get a structure where I have zero formal charges on each single one of these. So zero formal charges. Why? Because if I have a carbon with four bonds, it's a zero. If I've got a nitrogen with three bonds and a lone pair, it's zero. Oxygen, two bonds and two lone pairs is also going to be a zero. Let's quickly verify that and just do the oxygen here. We split that bond in half, realizing that a line is the same as two electrons. I split that in half. I'm going to have six minus six, and that's zero. Hydrogen is one minus one, and that's zero. These are all zero because any single bonded hydrogen is zero. Please note that you have four bonds on the carbon, so that's four minus four, and that's zero. This carbon has four bonds, so that's zero. This oxygen has two bonds and two lone pairs, so it's also a zero. Now note that does not always work, but it's a really good starting point. So with that in mind, we can do carbon dioxide. And then some of these start to become a bit more obvious as you look at them, because if you weren't sure what you were doing, you could go, all right, well, I know I have four 
plus 2 times 6 for a total of 16 electrons. And if I put these in and I put a single bond to each of the oxygens, I know I've got to share this, and so I'm going to obey the octet rule. And one possibility would be two double bonds and two lone pairs. The other thing you could do is you could put a triple bond on one and a single on the other. Now, this doesn't look as even, but it's got 16 electrons, and it's a perfectly valid Lewis structure. And you could flip and put the triple bond on the other one. So the question is, are these resonance or good resonance structures, or is one of these better? Well, the best way to do this is to calculate formal charge. Well, we know by inspection that this should have a Z of zero formal charges. How do we know? Because oxygen has two bonds and two lone pairs. Carbon here has four bonds. And this other oxygen has two bonds and two lone pairs. If we look at this guy, we realize we have a different electron distribution. This oxygen has fewer electrons. And this one has more electrons. So we are not going to have the same formal charge, because that's a measure of our distribution. So if we start out here, and we do our doubles. Again, we do dots rather than lines just to start out with, so we get very comfortable with these. We put in our dots, and I'm just going to do the dots on this one while I'm at it. Draw the dots so that I can easily split it in half. And that's split in half through the bond, and then I split. We split through the bonds, so we share them, the electrons equally in the bonds. Now I calculate formal charges. Oxygen starts with six. In this structure, it owns six, so it has zero formal charge. Carbon's got four valence electrons. It starts with four, has four in this structure, so it's zero. This again is the same as the other one, so it's six minus six. Well, we know that this one has more electrons. And this side has fewer, so let's verify it. Oxygen in here is in group six, so it has six, but now it has seven on its side of the line for a minus one. Carbon has four minus four, it still has four bonds, and that's a zero. And this oxygen has six minus a total of five for a plus one. Now, do not confuse the fact that the formal charge is summed to zero. That the formal charges sum to zero with them all being zero. The structure is better because each formal charge is zero. So we can play with these. So if we look at this molecule and we're looking at NCS minus, where we've calculated our formal charges here. Note here we've got carbon in the center, it's got four bonds, so it has a zero formal charge. Sulfur has two bonds and two lone pairs, it's in group six, so it has a zero formal charge. This nitrogen. Nitrogen would like three bonds and a lone pair, but here it's got two bonds and two lone pairs, so its formal charge is going to be five minus six for minus one. Now, we compare them to these guys and we shift, which is our central atom, we're going to start seeing much larger formal charges. As soon as our formal charges get larger, we know they're not good Lewis structures, and we're going to go with the formal one with the formal charge that has the values closest to zero for each atom. All right, let's look at N2O. Now, N2O, our first guess might be to put the oxygen in the middle, so let's try that. Let's double bond it to each nitrogen. If we play with this for a while, we're going to realize that this has to be double bonded. The triple bonds actually make it worse and not better, so we're going to start out with this. Let's try and compare it with a different structure where it's going to have a nitrogen in the middle instead with the oxygen on the outside. So if we start with this, and we have N2O with the nitrogen in the middle and the oxygen on the outside. Now we do know if we have X, Y to the N, that X is usually in the middle. This is one of the exceptions. So let's take and use formal charges to verify that this structure is better. So we're going to start right here with the N and the O in the middle. Nitrogen is in group 5. It's got 6 electrons in this structure, so it's minus 1. This is exactly the same, so it's minus 1 as well. And oxygen 
has six valence and only owns four in this structure, and that is a plus two. Well, that should give us the willies because oxygen is very electronegative. And it's not going to want to be short of electron. Here we still have five minus six, and that's going to be minus one. We have five minus four, it owns four in that structure, and this is plus one, and this is six minus six, and that is zero. So which of these two structures is better? The answer is this one. Why? Because all formal charges are less than or equal to plus or minus one. Here we have a formal charge of plus two. We want the lowest possible values on the formal charges. If we have equivalent Lewis structures, and we can figure out if we have equivalent Lewis structures now by calculating the formal charge, so let's consider NO2 minus. And if we do this, we realize that we are going to have 5 plus 2 times 6 plus 1 electron. Again, the 1 from the minus 1 on this structure, giving us a total of 18 electrons. If we put them on, we're going to have a nitrogen. And if we put our bonds to the oxygen here, we're going to double bond to one, single bond to the other, leave the lone pair on the nitrogen. And when we count, this is going to give us 18 electrons. Now, we can't double bond from each oxygen because that was going to give us too many electrons on the nitrogen. So if we take and we look at this, we realize we could either double bond to the oxygen on the right or the oxygen on the left with the lone pair here on the nitrogen. Realize, and you may have to stop and do this, if you follow that urge to double bond to each oxygen, first of all, that's only 16 electrons. If you put the rest in to get 18 electrons, you now have an expanded octet. And remember that nitrogen never expands its octet, so that is not a valid structure. So we got these guys. And because these have equal formal charges, how do we know this? Well, we know this because if we calculate them, anytime we have a double bond to oxygen, that's zero. Anytime we have a nitrogen with three bonds in a lone pair, that's zero. And if you have an oxygen with one bond and three lone pairs, that works out to be minus one. These guys have the same formal charges, which means these two structures are equivalent, which means they both exist, and these are going to be our resonance structures for NO2 minus. What actually exists is the average where this double bond is delocalized and shared equally between the two oxygens.